Welcome back to The Crochet Crowd, as well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com. Today I'm going to show you how to do this cozy knit hat. This is my first ever cabling hat. In this tutorial, it's actually an easy level once you understand how to do the cabling. This is my first time I ever cabled ever. So in this tutorial, what I'm going to do is going to kick you off. I'm going to give you a set of instructions through a different video in order for you to be able to knit to purl to, and then I'm going to kick you up into after the brim and then show you the four step repeat and then I will bring you back again to show you how to shape the crown. So without further ado, let's go down to the studio and let's see what we're up to today. In today's tutorial, you're going to need a few things. I recommend casting on to a circular set of knitting needles. This is a 20 inch one and they are a six and a half millimeter size US 10 and a half and this is just for the brim. Once we then switch off and we are starting to the main body of the hat, we are going to switch off to an eight millimeter size um, US 11, and I will be doing that. And then at the very top of this, when we shape the crown, we're going to be switching off with double points here of the eight millimeter US 11. So when you cast on right now, you're going to cast on a total of 60 stitches. Do that directly onto your circulars. It's a lot easier. This pattern is recommending Bernat Softy Chunky, but I decided to use Bernat Forever Fleece Tweeds, and this is the look that you'll see when it comes out of here. So I need you to use the next video that I'm about to show you, and you are going to cast on your 60 stitches, and you are just going to be able to make the brim, and it's a total of four inches high. Once you have that done, you're then ready for the next tutorial uh, part that'll come up. So here is the other version here, and I, you can see I've been doing the cabling, and you will also need some cable needles. So you can either choose something that you can find at a main store. This is a cable needle, and you can also use one of these as well. The size of the actual stitch work itself is determined when you go to knit itself, and so the cable is just holding it there. I'm also recommending that you have stitch markers to be able to identify where it is, so it's easy to keep counts for when you're doing each of the multiples that you'll see with the cabling. So without further ado, I'm going to play the next video for you. Make sure you cast on 60 stitches and then you do four inches until you get to this height here and this is where I'm going to pick you up next on this particular sample. This is a generic tutorial for how to do a brim that is knit to purl to. It, it could also be purl to knit to, it depends on the design. So we're going to start off with the slip knot. Remember, we have slower tutorials available here on the Knitting Crowd if you want specific information like that. You're going to insert your knitting needles. It is a circular here for the brim. And what we want to do is that I'm going to demonstrate a twist and transfer method. If you prefer a different method, then please do so. Okay, so this particular one, knit two, purl two, requires a multiple of four. So no matter what your uh, information that you have, it should be a multiple of four because there's two knit and two purl. So I'm going to wrap the back needle and I'm just gonna bring it through. And so we have a slower video available for this concept if you want it. And then it's called a cast on twist and transfer. And you're just going back in going around. This is a tight cast on. So whatever the cord length is that you have, this has to get all the way around that cord. So what you're seeing on camera here is a total of 14 inches from tip to tip. And because I'm using a small point likey um, knitting needle, you can decide whatever equipment that you would like to do. It just has to get around. So cast on the number that is suggested in the video or in the tutorial, um, or even in the written pattern, as long as it's a multiple four, this will work. And I'll see you in just a few seconds from now. So I've now just cast on, the number of stitches on here is divisible by four, so it gives a real number, so there's no decimal points. So whatever the number is, if you divide it by four, it should be in a whole number. So what you're going to do at this point, I'm gonna show you a little trick. I want you to add one more stitch to it, trust me. Okay, this is a trick I learned. So I'm gonna add one more stitch and put it on. Now, what I wanna do is that I wanna attach that stitch so that it's going to join the two ends together to make this going around. So I want you to put this and just purlwise slip stitch. So just stick the needle in this way and slip it onto the, to the other one here. Okay, so come on over. I then want you, see this one right here? to take this up over top of the point, leaving that in, in position. So it's gonna take a little bit of finesse and just drag it up and over the other one that you just moved over. 
Okay, so just take your time. It's not a race. It takes a bit of practice. Come up and over. Okay, and then slide down. So what you've done, even though you added an extra stitch to it, you've done it in a way that now the connection is permanent and pull things tight. Okay, so don't forget to pull things tight. So now we're going to want to know whenever we go in a full round, so slip on a stitch marker. And in this case, we are doing a knit two, purl two. And if the pattern says purl two, knit two, it's still the same, it's still divisible by four. So in this case, we're going to knit the first two. And when you knit the first two, make sure it's tight. Okay, so just use your finger. And when you knit, just kind of pull up on it and then knit the next one as well. Of the brims, I prefer knit two, purl two. That's one thing I've learned so far in knitting. So once you have that done, the next two are gonna be purl. So move the yarn from behind in the front and purl the next two. And you don't have to tug on those tight like you did in the first two. Okay, it's just because you were attaching and making it into a permanent circle. So the goal is, is that as you push up on this needle, you are going to push down on this one and it will come around the cord and back around. So once those two are done, you're going to knit the next two and then purl the next two and do that all the way around. And I'll see you at the end of the round in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way around. And because I started with the knit two, the last two stitches before the stitch marker should be a purl two. So if the pattern said that you had to start with purl two and finish with knit two, then knit two would be then your last before you're ending the round. Okay, so it works either way. So now you, this stitch marker, you're going to just transfer it over and then begin a new round. So you, you now have everything worked out. So if the stitch count did not work out and some, something happened and you didn't have the right number when you came all the way around, if you look at it, do you see that these stitches come straight on up? This was a knit stitch and the ones with the horizontal here, these are the pearls. So you should be able to see two, 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 everything's in sets of two in order to help you identify your stitches. So in case that you screwed up somewhere, if you just scan through that, you'll be able to tell which was which when you did it. So when you start another round, the first two stitches are really important on the second round, but then the rest of it, when you're going round and round, it won't matter so much. It's just because you did the join in the last round from here. So the first two will be a knit stitch because that's how we started. Okay, so once you have the first one done, pull up on it tight, 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 and then do the next one, wrap and coming through, and also pull that one tight. So the first two is the opportunity to pull tight and the rest of it won't matter so much. And then you're just gonna purl the next two and you'll do that around. So follow the instructions on the pattern itself or the video uh, tutorial that may be attached to this in order to work it, but this is how you would do the generic of knit two, purl two, or purl two, knit two, depending on the pattern for your brims. And that's it for now. Once you have your four inches done, just like this, we're then going to switch to the larger knitting needles. And when we go to knit, we're going to be using this and basically casting off this one at the same time. So we're going to be switching these out as we knit them. So we're going to pick up in the next round. And if you're ready to go, here's what the instructions will be. So let's begin the next round. So I'm going to be knitting right here. So I'm gonna move these up and we'll shift these down so that this cord is a lot longer hanging out. And as we knit, we're gonna be transferring it to my eight millimeter US 11. So the instructions is a repeat going around. And so we're gonna start with the very first one. I recommend that you put on, uh, actually at the end of this, we recommend that you put on a stitch marker so you can uh, tell the, the rounds. So we're going to knit the first four stitches. And so just ignore this other um, needle that's here. So knit the four. So one, two, three, and four. And then it says to knit front back. So how we do this is that this next stitch is that we are going to do an increase. So we're increasing the amount of stitches because the cabling has tension. We have to do that. So we're going to knit the first one, but we do not want to slide it off. We just want to knit it and hold. And then using the same stitch, move the needle to the back side and grab the back side of that same loop. Okay, it's a little awkward at first if you're not used to it. And so you're gonna come in and get that same loop, but on the back and then wrap and pull through. 
And so what this is doing is it's increasing the one stitch to make it a set of two. Okay, so I'm gonna do the repeat one more time. So you're gonna knit four in a row. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna knit front back. So here we go in, we go to knit it, but we don't slide off. And then using the back loop, just move it around the back, grab the same one, but on the back side, and knit. So please repeat that same step going all the way around. You will end up with the right amount of stitches. So you'll knit four and then knit front back. Knit four, knit front back, and I'll see you at the end of the round. When you're coming back around, the last stitch should be a knit front back, and that's just keeping in the sequence. So don't forget that one. And this is where I would put a stitch marker in. So let's talk about the stitch marker strategy because now everything has been transferred to this one and the original that we had is now gone and you can put that away for another time. So shift the needles so it's all ready to go and let's uh, pull up our stitch markers and show you what to do next. But I found the stitch markers, if they're strategically placed, it's a lot easier to keep the counts. So I have a color strategy. The very beginning of a round is the purple. So as I begin this, I'm going to slide on the purple so that I know that I won a round, it's there. The green is being used in the increments of the cabling itself. And so let's go back to the pattern. We have four rounds to complete over and over and over. And once we get to 10 inches high from here, all the way to the end of the repeat, then we can start shaping the crown. So let's go back to the pattern quickly. So right now we're going here. So one, two, three, and four. So really the third round is the only thing that's different. So rounds one and two and four are the same. So it's just the third round we have to worry about. So what I did for myself, I know it's hard to see, but I made a little chart, one, two, three, four, and I did it as I go. You can see that once I understood this is that I did check off when I did repeat it. I was watching um, something on television. So one of my repeats is kind of off and I'll show you that when I get there. Um, I wanna show you that because it matters on your cabling. So we don't actually cable until the third round each and every time. So the third rounds here is when we actually did our cabling. So let's begin and show you the first round. So let's begin our first round. I want you to slide on the one that will represent the beginning or ending of a round. So we're gonna just slide it on there and we're gonna move that every time we pass by it. So the repeat to go through this is that we're going to knit the next eight. So we just knit like normal eight. So let's count these out together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. You'll realize in the future that the first eight of a repeat is actually your cabling. Okay, the next four will then be a purl. So we're going to move the yarn in front and then purl the next four. So we have one, two, three, and four. Okay, this is where I want you to get another stitch marker now, and I want you to put it here. So this here section is a cabling and a space. So put this here, and so this will help you keep count that you know where you are at all times. So starting in the next repeat, move the yarn into the behind, and you're going to knit the next eight again. So this is your repeat. So you'll knit eight and purl four. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then you purl the next four. So we bring the yarn in front first and then purl. So we have one, two, three, and four. So these purling of the four is the space that you see between the cables. So now 
we are going to shift the yarn back and behind and get ready for the next repeat. Slide on your stitch marker there and there is another section of cabling that you have. So a cable and then a space. So continue that all the way around in that sequence and I'll see you at the end of round number one. So I've now just came back all the way around and I just reset my yarn to behind. I transfer the beginning one and now that I've gone all the way around all of the pieces are in work. So I have one, two, three, four, five greens and one purple and the purple represents the beginning. So let's do round number two, which is exactly the same. And for those that are experienced with knitting, you're going to notice that it's going to become more and more obvious which one is a pearl and which one is part of the cable. Let's begin round number two. To begin round number two, you are just going to knit the next eight. So it's exactly what you know. So just one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And once that's done, you are then going to purl the next four. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then you transfer this again. So this is the end of a repeat, so transfer it and then start again. So just start, knit the next eight, purl the next four, and then transfer your stitch markers and do that all the way around for round number two. So I'm back around here, number two, transfer the stitch marker and then come on back. And then we're going to start round number three, which is the cable round. And I'm gonna show you with two different tools and that's coming up next. You have a choice in the kind of tool that you want to use. I was using this one here that was a part of this that I found and you can also use one that has a hook formation. For the first demonstration on the first cable I'll show you this one and then I'll show you this one on the second cable in. So let's begin and we need to keep this close. So the cabling on this hat consists over eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. So the first four here is going to be a knit um, with the cross four in the back. And then the other four that here is the C four in the front. And what that means is that front and back means where the cabling is going to go. And so it takes these eight stitches in order to create the look that it has. So as you begin, you are going to start and you are going to remove the first two stitches to come straight on in and just use the hook formation and kind of just pull it off. So we got one, and then the second one go right down and you could just easily just pull it off. So because this one's in the back, you then want to just leave it in the indentation area and just leave it in the back side. I find that the first one in each of the first rounds, this is kind of a pain, but it gets easier as you go around. And then as you get more comfortable with this, cause I just started this yesterday, um, it actually gets much easier. So we're now going to knit the next four. So this yarn here has to come up here. So don't stay in behind here, come between. And you were going to knit the next two. So we have one and two. So now slide that off. And the these ones here, we have to stay in the same order. So we stay this one and then this one. And so we're going to slide this and we're gonna use this needle here and we're going to knit the next two. And what we're doing is we're changing the order of the stitches that creates the cable. So that was the knit in uh, with cabling in the back. Once you're done, pull this out and then everything has been retrieved. The next one is going to be the crossing in the front. So again, we're going to use this again and pull the first two off. So going in straight in. Just use the hooking and pull it off. And this time we're gonna leave it in the front. So leave it in the front of your work and you're going to knit the next two. So we have one and two. And then we're going to knit these. So pull this backwards and use this one. And this one is always a little tighter and you're going to knit this onto it and it changed the order in the other direction. 
So all eight stitches have now just been cabled and you're just gonna put this aside and you won't use it again until you get the next repeat. The next four will be just a purl. So make sure you put the yarn in front first and then purl. It's gonna become more obvious the bigger this thing gets is where these pearls are. And it will be a lot easier instead of excessive counting. Okay, so that was the end of the repeat. So you're, go so you're gonna do this, move your yarn in behind, move the stitch marker, and you're going to do exactly what I just showed you. Okay, so the first four will be crossing in the back, the next four is crossing in the front, and then the purl the next four. So let's use the other tool that I have here. So we're going to start, and you are going to hook onto the first two. Okay, so you have to decide which tool is easier for you. So you hook onto the first two. So it may be easier just to go one at a time and pull off. So I've got the first one and I got the second. And this one is in the back, so I'm going to flip it over and leave it on the back and let it just dangle on the back side. And then I'm gonna knit the next two. So you can see that this stays out of your hair a lot better than the other tool. So you knit the next two. And now you're ready to put this back on. So when you put this back on, you're going to use the longer side. So you're just gonna shift all the way back up on this needle here. And you're going to knit the next two by themselves. And so the first section's done. So you're gonna pull out. And now the next one is the cabling in the front. So again, just transfer over and transfer the first two onto this one. So hooking straight on in, get the first one and the second, and just let it stay to the front side and you're going to knit the next two. So you can see the weight and the angle of that one might be a better tool for you. So when you're ready, once the first two are done, you're going to shift this needle and then knit the next two. So these extra tools take a bit of getting used to. I don't that for myself, but it's not a lengthy process to get used to. Once that's done, pull it out. And now the other four before the next stitch marker is just a purl, so move the yarn in front and purl the next four. So I want you to repeat that process with whatever tool that you've decided to use for your cabling. And I'll be right back at the end of the round. This is round number three. I'm now at the end of round number three. So I'm going to transfer my stitch marker, put the yarn in behind, and get ready for the next round number four, which is part of the repeat. I wanna show you something on the real sample, um, and I'll be right back in a second. So when I was practicing on this last night, you see that this cable looks wrong compared to the other cables. And what it was is I was watching the movie called The Whale and it was really emotional and I lost my way in the plot. So what I accidentally did is that I accidentally put the cabling in the one section to be on the same side. So I accidentally went on the back side the first time and then the back again, where it should be the back, the first part, and then the front as the second part. And this is what happens with it. So I don't know how to recover from this because I'm such a new knitter, but just be careful just to watch that. And the stitch markers should be able to help you out uh, where you are, whether you are going to go to the front or the back. So let's move on to round number four. So round number four, we're going to just do what we already did in rounds number one and two. So it's gonna take several rounds before this um, does the look that you have, and it has to recover from the crossing over that you just did. So you're going to knit the first eight and then purl the next four and move your stitch markers as you go. And it's exactly what you know. And I'll be right back at the end of number four. So I'm now here at the end of number four. You're going to repeat rounds number one through four over and over. I did it a total of six times. So I did it the first time, which is what I just showed you. So I have two, three, four, five, and six, and you were going to finish on a fourth round. And therefore you'll pick up then shaping of the crown from that point. So what I need you to do is keep repeating rounds number one and two and four, which is the knit eight, 
Pearl 4, and the round three in the middle is the one with the cabling. And you're going to do that until you have a total of 10 inches high from the very base of here all the way to the top. So for me, because I'm a new knitter, it took me a while, and it, but it only took me an evening to do, and that's something that you can do. So please repeat rounds number one through four until it's 10 inches tall, and then we'll be back, and we're going to do then the transfer of the project then to the knitting needles here of the double points in order to finish off the top. So welcome back, and now I have 10 inches done from start to finish. So I worked on this last night. So it took me about three hours to do this, about two hours to do here. So I'm about five hours invested into this project. We're now ready to move on to the crown and the crown is only existing of seven rounds in order to get this to go. And so what we are going to do is only cable one more time uh, in this on the third round and we're going to be doing a C3B and a C3F and I'll show you how to do that. And what we have to do now though, we have to get it off the circulars and pull these bad boys out. These are called double point needles. They are the same thickness of an eight millimeter that we have been using. And I am going to start and I'm gonna tell you my strategy in just a second. My first strategy is just to grab a piece of yarn and just loop it like this. And I want you to go to where this is. This is the end of a round or start, depending on your perspective. And I want you just to go through, and I just want you to pull through and thus loop that around. And so this will naturally fall off on its own because we're gonna to transfer to the double points. And so this will represent when I'm going around. The next strategy point is to divide this up to four needles instead of just one. The next strategy is using the double points. I want to use a total of four of them. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to grab the first and second section to put onto one needle. I'm going to grab just this section to do one needle. And then I'm going to do the next two sections to do one needle. And then the last section will be one needle. So that'll give me a total of four. I want to go to where the stitch marker is so that I can uh, reduce this easily. So if you just start picking random stitches because of the way that this is working, it gets really difficult. So keep within the increments of the decrease. So we're going to start transferring this off of this and work our way around with the double points next. Finally, the third strategy, what I want to do is that because I'm going to use two sections here on one needle, I'm going to leave the stitch marker that is in between them, but I'm going to be removing the ones because it's just going to be stopping here with the needle and then a new needle. So I'm just going to keep the ones that will be on the long um, sections only, and just so I can see where those are, just for clarity reasons. So let's officially begin round number one of shaping the crown. We're going to start by doing a reduction just in the cable only. And we're gonna start with our first one with your new knitting needle here. And you're just going to start and you were going to do an SSK. So what that means is that you're just gonna go in like you're going to knit it and you're just gonna slide off. And then you're gonna grab the next one going in like you're going to knit it and slide off. And then you're going to slide both of them back onto this needle going straight on in. And what this is doing is it's turning the stitches 180 degrees. You were then going to go into both of them together at the same time and then knit. Make sure that this comes around that other needle that's sitting here and just knit. So you've just done a, a together stitch. You can keep this out of the way. And so now we have to knit the next four in a row. Okay, so we'll count these together. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then you have two more stitches that are left as part of the cable. And this here will be um, a crochet two, or sorry, uh, knit two together. So you're going to go into both loops at the same time. And you're gonna put that together like that. So the cabling is being reduced by one stitch on both sides. Now, the next four that you have, you're gonna keep those as purl. So move the yarn in front and purl. So we have one, two, three, and four. And I'm gonna do one more section before I, I move on to a new needle. So because of that, I wanna move this stitch marker over on this one so I can see where those are. So I'm gonna start another new section and we're going to move our yarn back in behind. 
and we're going to do an SSK again. So you slip the first one, slip the second, and then slip it back on, straight on in, and that turns it 180 degrees, and then you put both of them together. And then you are going to knit the next four stitches. So we have one, two, three, and four. And now you're gonna put the next two together, which is still part of the cabling. So put those together as one. So capture both and knit. And then the next four are gonna be your pearl and you can clearly see that too. So the pearls not being changed is not in the counts. And then once I finish these pearl, I'm going to jump to a new needle and leave this needle in behind. So as you're knitting with this, you're releasing these off of the circular knitting, uh, knitting needles. So move it halfway down, okay, so it's equal, and move it up, and you can take off the stitch marker because that's a new section, and, you're, and I just want to do one section only. So grab a new needle up, and we're going to start with an SSK. So you go in, slide off, in, slide off, and then put them back on. So turn it 180 degrees and then go into both. And because you've now jumped the needle, you wanna stay and keep it tighter on the jump so that you don't end up with a gap space and just ignore the other needle that is sitting here. And as you do a couple stitches, that will get out of your way. So those are together and then you're going to do the next four. So we have one, two, three and four and we want to put the next two together as a knit two together so just going in and just sliding into both and put those together and then you got to purl the next four okay Okay, so that's all I want on this needle. So move it halfway down and let it hold. You can take this stitch marker out. And then what I want you to do is do the next two sections together on the same needle, exactly what I just showed you, and then do the last section, which will look like this one here. So you just gotta remember that you're going to SSK, then knit four, knit two together, and then purl the next four, and you'll repeat that all the way around for round number one. So I'm coming around and I'm just purling the last ones here and I can tell by the stitch marker that I left in the yarn that I'm coming all the way around and I'm just purling into my last four. So this will release the circular knitting needles forever on this project and now you are left with the double points. So you can pull that out and now you're left with this configuration here. Okay, so you got two long sides and two short sides. We're now going to move on to round number two. Round number two, we're not gonna do any reductions, but you're gonna use the fifth needle because you have four in place. And you are going to start and you are going to knit the first six. And essentially you're knitting the cable area. That helps you to know that. So make sure when you jump these needles, you just kind of pull it a little tighter so you don't end up with a gap and put this needle in behind. Once you do a couple of these, the, this needle here will get out of the way. So you can count it, so two, three, four, five, and six. And then you are going to do four purls in a row. And because this is a longer needle, you're gonna have two sections on this needle. I'm recommending that you do transfer that stitch marker. So put the yarn in behind and transfer, and then you knit the next six again. Okay. 
and then you purl the next four. And that will take you and finish off this needle here. And then the needle that I'm finishing off with will be to become the new knitting needle in the next turn. Okay. So move halfway, pull out, and keep on going around. So then you'll knit the first six, purl the next four, and then you'll jump again. And then you have two sections in this needle, and then one more section here. So please do that same configuration all the way around for number two. So we're now going to do the next section and we're going to do the cabling. There's only six stitches that are part of the cable, not eight. So that's why we're doing a C3B and a C3F. I'll show you how to do those as well. So you will need the cable knitting needle. This is the last time you will be using it in this project. So you're still gonna go in and you're still gonna hook the first two off. And when you're done with this one, you put it to the back. So we're gonna start with a C3B, put it to the back and you are going to knit with this fresh needle here. It feels wrong, but you just gotta trust it. And the yarn, when it comes up, okay, you just, it's gonna be right here, and you're going to just bring it on over. Okay, pull it relatively tight, just to make sure that you keep it there. And now the other two that are here, so there's only um, three stitches that are part of it, you are going to knit as regular. So that was a C3B as in Bob. You're now going to grab the next two stitches and you're going to hook it and pull it off. And you're going to leave the needle on the front. It's so like before, and then you're going to knit the next one only. And then you're going to shift up and knit those two. So that was a C3 F as in Frank. Okay, so this needle is done for now for this section. Now we have four pearls that are here. We're going to put the first two together and then the next two together. So put the yarn in front first. And just slide on in. Things are a little tight because of the cabling. going into both, wrap, and so you just made two pearls into one. I didn't get all of the plies, so I'll try again. Like that. And then you're gonna grab the next two and do the same thing. So in and in, wrap, and going in. So move this behind, and now we have another section still on this needle. Move this over, and you are going to start by doing your cabling. So to start, you're going to grab this one back up, and you're gonna do the C3B. So grab just two, and pull off, and leave it to the back. And then coming on in. Okay, so stay in front of this cable needle. So just do one only, and then use the needle and knit the next two. Okay. Now we're going to do the cabling again. So slide on in, grab the first two off. And then this one stays in front. Just knit the next one only. And then knit the next two that are on this needle. Okay, and now this needle is done for this section here. You'll have to do it for the rest. And then you have the four pearls that are left and so move the yarn in front and purl till two together. Put them together as one stitch. 
and then put the next two pearls together. I'm kind of rushing a little bit, so I kind of feeling the pressure of the camera being on. Okay, got into both, wrap and pull through. So this needle is technically done. So you're gonna pull this out, move it halfway. So there's gonna be less stitches here. And then you're gonna continue the same formation. And remember, you gotta slip, use the cable, slip the first two off, and then um, knit the next one with the fresh needle like I just showed you before. And then you're going to knit the one on the cable and etc. Please do this all the way around for round number three. Okay, let's go on to round number four. So you're not going to do any more reductions on this round here that we're about to do. And so you're going to knit the next six and then purl the next two. And you're going to do that all the way around. So um, just continue that same sequence all the way around. So knit six, purl two, and I'll see you at the end of the round for round number four. Okay, round number five, we're going to do another reduction. And we're going to start with the SSK. So you've done that before. So you got a slip stitch the first two off and then put it on. Then you're going to put your needle here and put the two, first two together like you did before. And now you're just gonna knit the next two. So we have one and two. Okay, and now the next two are gonna be coming together. So put the next two, it's a knit two together. and the pearls will remain unchanged. So just purl the next two. So your sequence around, you'll SSK. So you put the first two of the knit together, or of the cable together, you'll knit the next two, knit the next two together, and then purl the next two and do that sequence all the way around for round number five. Okay, round number six, second last round. Nice and easy, you're going to knit the next four and then purl the next two, and you're gonna repeat that all the way around. So knit four, purl two, and I'll see you at the end of the round. Here's your last round. I'd recommend that you take off any stitch markers that you've been doing if you've been keeping that on board. And so we're gonna do a lot of reduction on this round because it is the last one. So we're gonna start with an SSK. So sliding off and putting back on and put those two together. And then you're going to knit the next two together, this part of the cable. So you're gonna knit those two together. And then you have two pearls that are here and you're gonna put those both together. Okay, so your sequence going around, going from this point and remove your stitch marker off because you won't need it. And then you're going to SSK the first two Put the next two together with the knit together and then put the two pearls together and do that all the way around for your last round and i'll be right back in a moment okay your stitch work is now done and i want to create a longer tail here and then i'm going to cut and then we're going to because this is thick yarn i want to use a thick tapestry needle that i can get the yarn through the eye of the needle and we're going to start as if we're going to continue to go around with the knitting needles Okay, so I ended here. So I'm going to start, and I'm gonna start collecting stitches. So just go straight on in, and you can grab as many as you are comfortable with, and just kind of pull through, but don't pull it tight until you get all the way around. So once they're confirmed on there, you can slide off and they won't pop off or unravel. And you're going to go all the way around pulling off your needle as you go so this one's done put it aside move around and continue to pull these off and i'll be right back in a moment on my last needle here and just working those off too and that's it so now everything is resting on that strand that you just did so what you're just going to do is carefully but firmly pull the top shut. You're now going to 
go completely across and then back over. So that'll close the top. And then what I like to do is go the other direction, like across. And then we'll go straight into the hat and put your hand carefully behind it and pull through. Turn the hat inside out and secure that to the inside of the hat. So don't go too deep that it's gonna go through the project and just tie it into a knot. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to save this strand that I have, and then I'm going to go back to where I started, leaving the hat inside out. And this is where the starting strand, and I wanna put that onto my needle, and I wanna weave it through. So um, to me, it came untwisted, so I will retwist. Technically, because I used stitch markers, I could have got rid of this sooner. So now I'm just going to drag this through back and forth a total of three times. So one, so the first pull, make sure you don't over pull and then going back again. And because you started with a slip knot, it won't come undone. And just stay within this side of the project. So don't go too deep. And then you can safely cut that down. So are we gonna do a pom-pom or not? So let's do the pom-pom next and let's turn the hat facing out again, remove any more stitch markers that you may have. And let's put on a pom-pom. So I'm going to put a pom-pom on this thing. I'd recommend that you tie it into a bow tie underneath the hat. People in craft shows, they get all weird about pom-poms. So then they come up with excuses not to buy something. So this particular pom-pom has a loop. And if it doesn't, just go right through into the pom-pom material itself. So I'm just gonna pull through and I'm gonna dive into the top of the hat and just pull that strand through, but I don't wanna pull all of it, just a piece of it. And then pull the needle with me and then go to the other side and refeed it. So if somebody says they would have bought the hat because it's a pom-pom, you can just undo the, the, the bow tie. So then come into the top of the hat across from the hole Again, using your hand and behind and pull that strand through and don't pull it so tight that it's gonna pull it all the way through. Okay, let's turn the hat inside out. And now we're going to grab both of the strands that are in the inside. Okay, and I wanna make sure that the pom-pom is resting on the top of the hat. and then just tie it into a bow tie. So if people wanna wash the hat, they wanna take the pom-pom off, they can do so and refeed it themselves. And that would be how you would do this amazing hat. So when you wear it, you flip it up like this and it's gonna fit perfectly. And this here is the Cable Cozy 